Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It is Tuesday, March. It's not March. It feels like March. Oh my. Does it feel? Well, late March because I'm still wearing a toque and my winter coat and my long underwear. Good morning, Leanne and good morning, Karen. Good to have you here this morning. Good morning, Alicia and Oakley. So good to have you. And Joyce, I am I am close to where you live today, actually. Good morning, Patty, and good morning, Shane. Good morning, and <laughs> Alicia, first one in with the hello. Hello, Alicia. Yes, it is a bright and sunshiny morning. Uh, good morning, Donna, and good morning, Ellen and Jeremiah and Rob. Good morning. And so, Yes, we're going to play the guessing game again. Good morning, Lynn. <laughs> and where do you think I am this morning? Good morning, Brenda. <clears throat> and uh, so, but it is nice and sunshiny. I can't say it's like bitterly cold, but I will say that it's cool enough that I am wearing all of my winter gear still. But I have a feeling it's going to turn out to be a beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful day. Good morning, Tanya. Good to have you here this morning. Good morning, Laura. I know the sunshine is so nice this morning. Good morning, Greg. And the birds are out because you can hear them. There they are. Yes, good morning, Jen, and maybe Steve. I know, May or March. <laughs> it just feels like a day. Uh, good morning, Suzanne. Uh, good morning, Paul and Sue. All right, so anybody want to guess where we are this morning? Anybody want to guess? You're thinking, hmm, I don't know because I can't see the front porch. Well, let me just show you a wee bit of the front porch without giving too much away. There we go. There we go. There's the front porch. Good morning, Sarah and uh, Peyton, just in case Peyton's up. Maybe even Eli is up. Good morning, Kayla. It is such a nice day today. Maybe I'll give you a few more hints. I have... A quilt with me I know it's another one of those quilts peg good morning I have some flowers yeah I don't want to give too much away oh Patty guessed it we're at Lynn and Henry's today and actually pastor Henry is on the porch can we all say good morning Henry they will say good morning Henry do you want to say hi back good morning everybody there we go pastor Henry on deck yes good morning Frida Peyton is here too. Oh, good. Good morning, Stephanie. So here we are all, to all together today. And uh, yes, we are at Lynn and Henry's. See, you guys got this. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Karen says, hi, Henry. So, uh, so I hope maybe some of you will have your coffee ready and you're wondering, okay, who are we talking about today? I know everybody is saying hi now to you. They're so happy to see you or hear you. Good morning, Neil. Uh, so yesterday, on Sunday, I asked that you would answer the question, if you could have coffee with any woman from the Bible, which woman from the Bible would you have coffee with? And, uh, and you all had different, uh, you posted in different answers, which was great. And so yesterday, Steve uh, Bradley and his wife Jenny uh, did Mary. And some of you, you asked for Mary which was great. Uh, just wanting to know what it was like to raise Jesus and to be chosen by God. And, and to be honest, 10 minutes is not going, like you need a good hour to have coffee with someone. And even then that's just scratching the surface. So uh, Jenny specifically looked at what would it have been like to discipline Jesus? Did she have to discipline Jesus? These are all very good questions. Uh, that's the cool thing about heaven. We're going to be there for a long time. We can ask all of our questions um, that we may or may not have. And so today, today we are going to talk about, we're going to have coffee. We're going to have coffee uh, with Eve. And uh, this was actually uh, the one uh, question that came in said, I would want to have coffee with Eve and understand her side of the story about how evil came in um, in the unexpected form of a snake and manipulated her to do the wrong thing. Uh, and if she encounters something like that again after being punished, how would she react? Because I fall into temptation too. And I was thinking, oh, that's, that's good. If she, if she, uh, you know, if she was to fall, like be tempted again, what would she do the same thing? 
And I would love to say that once I've been tempted to do something and I make a mistake, that I've learned my lesson. Not really. I usually do the same thing two or three times and then I learn my lesson. Because let's face it, I speed and I get a ticket. And I'm pretty good for a couple of years. And then I think, hmm, maybe you're going too fast again. And you know what happens? I get another ticket. You would think that the first time would have been enough. Nope. And my dad would always say, do you have extra money to just be thrown around? Because if you do, you can just give it to me. Like, so I don't know if, you know, if necessarily if we, you know, sin once and we put up all the boundaries if, if we don't sin again. I don't know. Sometimes I make it happen. Sometimes I don't. But I want to read to you the passage from the Bible because when we think about Eve, she is at the beginning and it happens right after God says this, it is not good for man to be alone. And so I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. And he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living cr creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his, his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. It goes on to say, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat of any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say we must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, with your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who ate, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden at the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said, Where are you? And he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that is that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your be belly and you will eat dust and all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between you and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And that's most of the story. We go on to hear that uh, Eve gives birth to two sons, Cain and Abel. Um, and Cain makes an offering that pleases the Lord, or Abel makes an offering that pleases the Lord, and Cain does not, and so Cain kills Abel. And then Eve goes on to have a son named Seth and more children after that. And that's basically the story that we have of Eve. And I find it very interesting that we can say, oh, well, she didn't really know. But we're told that she walked with the Lord every day. Like God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, was in the garden with them. And yet she still chose to sin. And, and you might say, well, she might not have known, you know, what would have happened. And <laughs> that's one of the issues that we have. We want to know what the consequences are. Before, or sometimes we don't actually... Sometimes we don't care what the consequences are, and sometimes we already know what the consequences are. 
It's part of just our own choice. God created us to have a choice because that's what what births true relationship, right? You're not in a real relationship if you don't have a choice to do that. You have to willfully choose. And so God created humanity with a will to choose, to choose to love God or not choose to love God. And so God put before them like a rule, right? So were they going to choose to obey? <laughs> and Eve chose not to obey. And God was right there, and she still chose her own way. And uh, and it just got me thinking about, Henry and I were talking beforehand about, sometimes we have to choose to obey before we believe. We often want to know everything about it. I, I'm the biggest one to ask, why? Why? Why should I do that? And the command is simple simply in scripture just this is what I've asked you to do and when we look at the Ten Commandments it says don't murder it doesn't say why it doesn't say what the repercussions are it's simply because God told us not to now we understand it's because you know you can't really love others if you're killing them we have to choose to obey God because he knows what's best and so you have Adam and Eve in the garden with God and she chose willfully not to obey but what else did she choose she chose not to ask God right you have Satan who's appearing in the form of a, of a serpent and he's talking to her why did she not turn and ask Adam hey what do you think about this why did she not wait and say uh let me just talk to God about that who she knew she still didn't she chose as an act of her will. So there's two things there that I, I'm thinking about this morning is the fact that am I actually going to choose to believe and do what God said to do? Am I actually going to obey because God knows best? And secondly, uh, when temptation comes, am I going to try to just handle it on my own? Or am I going to turn to people um, for help and encouragement? Am I going to turn to God? Like why didn't she turn to Adam and say, hey, what do you think about this? Nope. There, there does not there is not any discussion listed in scripture nor does she turn to God and say God what do you think about this no nope. she simply sees that it was pleasing to the eye and she took it and she ate it her own choice and so we can blame Eve for making that choice and say well if she hadn't have done it but we would probably have done the exact same thing because it says for all of all of sin like we all have that desire to do our own thing and we need to uh, willfully choose to surrender our will to the Lord because he knows what is best and so when we think about well how do I apply the story of Eve to my life I, I want to encourage you to offer those two things to the Lord Lord would you help me to believe today even when I don't understand would you help me to believe and to trust you that's a toughie, but remember we talked two weeks ago about believe and the man who brought his son to Jesus to be healed. And he said, I believe, but help my unbelief. So once again, here we are coming back around to believing, even when we might not understand, even when we might not understand, we have to choose to believe and we can ask Jesus to help us in our unbelief. And he will, because God's way is always the best way. And then secondly, when temptation comes, wait. <laughs> that is the best four letter word I can give you today is wait when when temptation comes when choices come wait and then second good letter four letter word is pray turn to God say God what do you think about this is this the right choice um, and ask for help just like so often I call Henry and I'm like Henry what do you think about this and we sit and we talk and we come up with a plan um, so when temptation comes, when we're not sure, when a, when a choice is presented to us, what does God say? Always first, what does God say? And secondly, seek wise counsel. Ask for help. Another good four-letter word. Um, so wait, pray, and ask for help. Wait, pray, and ask for help. So when I think about Eve, there's a whole bunch of other questions that I have for her. Because I got thinking about the fact that she had one of her sons kill her other son. And just the grief, the grief that she bore all of her life for the choices that she made. And so uh, 
I would say Eve, which means mother of all mankind, humanity, was also a woman full of grief. But thanks be to God, because at the end of the story, he says, he puts this, the, the, the beginning of redemption right there at the beginning. He says, but one of her offspring will come along and crush your head, meaning Satan's head will be crushed by Jesus dying on the cross and rising again. And that is the hope that we have, that when we make mistakes, when we fall into temptation, uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we don't have to bear the weight of our guilt, but Jesus come has come to bear the weight of our guilt and to pay for the forgiveness of our sins. <sighs> Praise the Lord that we don't have to sit with that. And he can bring redemption to any situation. We just need to offer it to him. And what's interesting is Eve never went back to God and said, I was sorry. There's no recollection. Uh, she passed the blame onto Adam and to the serpent. Well, actually, Adam passed the blame to Eve. Eve passed it on to the serpent. So when we mess up, we need to turn to God and say, God, please forgive me. Please forgive me when we receive his forgiveness. There's a lot to think about there. I could keep going, but my coffee's going to get cold, and so will yours. So think about Eve today, and uh, believe what God says. Or, uh, yeah, believe what God says when temptation comes. Ask God, right? Pray, and, and wait, wait. Find someone to talk it out with before you make your choice. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the story of Eve today. And so we ask that you would help us to believe and obey and wait and pray and to ask for forgiveness when we mess up. We thank you for your grace. It's so good. Would you help us, Lord, to just draw near to you and to trust you when you give us a command Help us to believe it and obey. Help us to obey God. We must obey God. Help us to do that today. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, my dear friends, I'm going to drink my coffee. I'm going to have a wee chat with Lynn and Henry. Feel free to give them a call today. Say hi. Send them a text. Email. They're both on Facebook. That's it. We'll chat later. Okay. Bye.